Univariate analysis is the simplest way of understanding the data. The first thing I want to do is to see the data distribution. To do that one, we're going to use an R script that we created at the first geostatistic course in the lesson five. This histogram is the number six and it is known as a histogram count beans. Double click to open. Then we have to select the layer is data set and also the parameter is going to be this one, air quality index. Now I'm going to fill all these uh, fields. I already filled some of them. The label X is going to be the air quality index and this parameter doesn't have any unit. The label Y is going to be number of samples. Title of the graph is going to be histogram. Subtitle is going to be row data because we didn't make any transformation on the data. For the X minimum and X max and X maximum, we are going to check the attribute table. And here we can see what is the maximum and minimum values for the air quality index. That's the values I want to add over there. The minimum one is 10 units and the maximum one is 174 units. And the total number of samples is 164. Then I need that information. Then the minimum value is 10. Maximum value is 174. And also now I'm going to use the calculator to know how many beans are going to add in the histogram. And that one is going to be the total number of samples, that is 164. And I'm going to do the root square. And is 12.8, then approximately is going to be 13 beans. And what I'm going to do now is make the difference between the maximum and minimum. That is going to be 164 divided between 13. And that one is going to be the interval. The, the interval I want for each bean on my histogram. Then I'm going to copy this value and I'm going to paste over here. Paste, and I'm going to run this one. Now double click to open. And let's go to make this screen bigger. What we can see in this histogram is that the data is not normally distributed because most of the data is located in this section of the graph. And when we are working on the experimental semi-virogram, mental semi-virogram, what we want is to have a data that is showing a normal distribution, because as closer is the normal distribution, better is going to be the estimation of the experimental semi-virogram. Remember that the function of the semi-virogram it's not parametric, okay? And then we can use data that it's not normally distributed. But as closer is the data to the normal distribution, better is going to be the estimation of the experimental semivariogram. And as better is the experimental semivariogram, better is going to be the model that we can fit on the data. Then at the end, what we want is to have a data distribution that is very close to the normality. Now, let's go to do a box plot to see where is located the mean value, the interquartile, if we have any outlier in the data set. To do that one, we are going to use a script that we created at the first geostatistic course in lesson six, and the script is the number 13. Is this one over here? Double click to open. Then it's going to be this one. Filter. Parameter is going to be this one. And I'm going to copy and paste these uh, labels over here. And now we can run this script. Let me move over here and double click to open. And let's go to make this screen bigger. 
And what we can see over here that the histogram with the box plot doesn't match really well because as you can see 100 has to be over here and it's located over here. Then let's go to run this script again. Let's go to add these values again and see what happened now. Now it's better. Let me make this screen bigger. Now let's go to analyze the information with the box plot. What we have here is with the red line, we have the mean value. And with the black line that is dashed, we have the, the median. And both values are different, okay? And that is indicating also that the, the distribution of the data is not normal, okay? When we have a normal distribution, the mean value is representative of all the data set. But in this case, it doesn't happen because these high values over here are pushing the, the mean value to this area of the graph. But most of the data are located in this area of the graph. Then we can say that these values over here, these dots over here, are outliers. And these outliers affect the mean value of the data set. In this case, we are going to consider that we are going to have uh, outliers when the distance from the third quantile, that is this point over here, to here is higher than 1.5 the interquartile uh, range. Quartile, uh, range. The interquartile range is from the first quantile, that is this point over here, to the third quartile over here. All this distance from here to here is the interquartile range. Then when this branch from the third interquartile to here is higher than 1.5, the interquartile range, then we are going to have the outliers. And that's what happened over here. And also we are going to have outliers if it happens in this direction also over here. But in this case, we don't have outliers in this section of the graph, just in this section. Then the next step is to make a data transformation in order to have a normal distribution in our data set. And that's what we are going to do. Then to do that one, we are going to go to the data set. I have opened the data set over here. And uh, let's go to edit, then press this button over here. And uh, let's go to open the field calculator. And here we are going to create a new field. There is going to be the lock, the lock with base 10. And it's going to be the, the air quality index, okay? Then we are going to select decimal number. This one is good. And then let's go to open here math. Let's go to select this one, logarithmic with base 10. Then let's go to select the field. In this case, the field is going to be this parameter over here, double click. Then let's go to close this one. And OK. And that one is going to create a new column with the logarithmic of this parameter. Then we are going to use this transformation to improve the distribution of our data. Okay. Now we are going to do the, the histogram to see how it looks like. But first we have to save this one. Save. In other way, if you leave open, the R is not going to work properly. Okay. Then we can leave this one like that. And now we can go to the histogram first and select here the new parameter that is going to be this one. We can leave this one like that. We can add here, for example, log 10. And also here for transform data. Log 10. 
and also here we have to change to change the range let's go to see what is the range now then it's going to be from 1 to 2 241 then here is going to be 1 and here is going to be 2.241 and now let's go to calculate the difference with the calculator well the difference is going to be 1.241 and we want this number divided between 13 because that's the number of bins i want divided between 13 equal and now this number over here select all is going to be our new interval copy and paste over here paste and now let's go to run this one and double click to open and now you can see that the distribution is more close to the normality okay it's not perfect the histogram is still asymmetric but most of the data is located at the middle of the graph right and it makes a shape that is a type of bell and then we can say that we have a gaussian distribution a normal distribution right if we compare with the other one the distribution improves a lot now we can see how it looks like the box plot also then the, let's go to add the values over here i have the box plot and let's go to change here the parameter it's going to be this one here i have to add log 10 and that's the transformation also here i'm going to remove raw data and i'm going to add transform to log 10 and here i have to add the minimum value is one one the maximum value is 2.241 and the interval is this one right copy and paste and let's go to run this one and double click to open and let's go to make this screen bigger okay now as you can see the now as you can see the the mean value and the median they are closer right and also the the box is more at the middle of the graph okay we have some outliers now in this section of the graph but we improve a lot right if we compare with the other one where the values are pretty separated the box is too much to the left we have a lot of outliers now we reduce the number of outliers the box is more to the middle and these two values are more closer right then we can say that this uh, data this new data set based on the logarithmic with base 10 for the air quality index this type of transformation of the data improve the distribution right and now we can use this data to do the the experimental semivariogram because semivariogram because the results are going to be better now to finish the univariate uh, exploratory data analysis uh, we are going to create one more graph that is going to be the q q plot and the QQ plot, we created this script at the first geostatistic course in the lesson seven. Then is uh, this one over here, double click to open, select the data set. First, we are going to see the QQ plot for the data without any transformation. Now I'm going to add the labels. Then what we have at the label X is going to be the normal theoretical quantiles. For the label Y, we are going to have the observed quantiles at the air quality index. The title of the graph is going to be the QQ plot and the subtitle is going to be raw data. 
Then let's go to run this script. And let's go to see the results. And as you can see in this graph, this uh, black line is the ideal X scenario, right? If we have all the purple dots on the black line, it is indicating that the, the distribution of the data, it's normal, okay? It's perfect. It's normally distributed, okay? As farther are the dots from the black line, less normal is the distribution okay and in this case as you can see the the dogs are pretty far the distribution is not really good and this qq plot is associated with this data set okay and we can see again that the distribution is not normal right this graph it's another graph to to identify the normality of the data okay and oh, normally distributed now we are going to do the same but for the data transformation then let's go here and let's go to add the values we are going to modify some things here we want to change the parameter for log 10 and also here is going to be log 10 and here we are going to put uh, transform transform and it's going to be log 10 then we can run and double click to open and now as you can see we improve a little bit the graph right if we compare with the other one we get more points that are on the line or close to the line, right? That as it is an improvement on the data distribution to be more normal, right? Distributed. And this uh, graph, it comes from this data set, this one, that it's more normally distributed, more symmetric, okay? And that's the, the improvement of the data distribution. We use two different graphs, the histogram and the QQ plot to, to see the normality of the data, right? Of the how the data is distributed. Now let's go to move on to the 